Hello YouTube! So I'm aware I haven't been uploading so many videos recently, uh, but it's because next week I am defending my PhD thesis, so I've kind of been preoccupied with all of that. Uh, hopefully once that's out of the way I'll um, be able to get on a more regular schedule for uploading stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, anyway, today I just wanted to briefly talk about, um, well, Bayesianism. Uh, uh, subjective Bayesianism specifically. Um, so um, yeah, just a few brief thoughts on, on this. Why exactly is it that I must uh, conform my degrees of belief to the probability calculus? Uh, why must I update my beliefs, my degrees of belief, according to Bayesian conditionalization? Um, so, so why, for example, would I be making a, making a mistake, or why would it be you know wrong to assign, for instance, uh, seventy percent probability to the proposition that I have hands, and seventy percent probability to the proposition that, say, the external world does not exist, which I recognise entails that I do not have hands. Um, so, uh, on the subjective Bayesian account, the important thing to note here is that. If this is a mistake, it's not a mistake that's going to be explained in virtue of uh, sort of failing to match the objective probabilities, because subjective Bayesians don't think that there are objective probabilities. Um, so uh, in some sense, you know, like if I assign 70% probability to A and 70% and probability to not A, in some sense there's a failure of rationality there. But it's, again, it's, it's not the, the failure there, the mistake there, is not going to be a matter of failing to uh, match what the objective probabilities are. So uh, I think it, it's worth noting an important difference between this kind of case, uh, where I, I have, you know, degrees of belief that um, sort of violate the, the axioms of probability theory, um, and then a case where, for instance, I just believe, like, believe a contradiction. Um, so so there's, a, there's a difference between um, believing A and not A, believing that I have hands and I do not have hands, and then assigning 70% probability to A and 70% probability to not A. So in the case where I believe A and not A, um, there's a very straightforward way of, ex of sort of accounting for what's gone wrong there. And that's to say that if I believe A and not A, then I'm guaranteed to be making a mistake. Uh, at, at least assuming, you know, putting aside dialetheism. So let's put aside situations where there might be true contradictions. Um, as long as we're not in a dialetheic situation, then I know that if I believe both that I have hands and that I do not have hands, then I'm going to be making an error. Um, uh, at least one of my beliefs is guaranteed to be false. Uh, obviously, philosophers want to avoid false beliefs, so uh, you know na naturally they would object to, you know, believing both a and not a, believing both the proposition and its negation. Um, I mean, another way of putting this is that if you imagine two people, you know, like Verity believes that she has hands, uh, Sydney is, you know, buys into. Uh, external world, some sort of external world sceptical scenario, so uh, he does not believe that hands exist. Um, so we can say one of them is wrong, right? One of them is mistaken about the way the world is. In, 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 in one case, perhaps, uh, like maybe Verity has got things right, she has correctly represented the way the world is, Sydney has got things wrong. But when we're dealing with degrees of belief, with, with probabilities, um, the situation is quite different, because as the subjective Bayesian sees it, there is no objective probability that we might match or fail to match, right? So if Verity assigns 70% probability to the proposition that hands exist, and Sydney assigns 70% probability to the proposition that hands do not exist, um, the Bayesian the subjective Bayesian at least, will not say that one of them must have made an error. Um, in, indeed, it, like, 
to even talk of, of error is just going to be nonsensical because for the subjective Bayesian, your prior probabilities can be whatever you like. Um, you can you, know, you can just assign them uh, essentially at random as long as again as, as long as they obey the axioms of the probability calculus. But it's perfectly fine for you know one person to have very very high confidence that hands exist and another person to have very low confidence that hands exist. Um, like there's there, there is there is no mistake there's no error that uh, either of them will be making what we can do is, all we can do is evaluate the rationality of sets of probability assignments so if so given that verity assigns 70 percent probability to the proposition that she has hands she must assign 30 percent probability to the proposition that uh, she does not have hands um if Verity assigns 70% probability to the proposition that she has hands and 70% probability to the proposition that she does not have hands, well, that's that's irrational. But why, right? Why is that irrational? We're, we're not cashing out uh, the failure of rationality in terms of a mistake, like we are in the case of standard belief, or at least, or at least a mistake about, like, you know, getting things wrong about the way the world is. So there is a standard move here, which is the appeal to what are known as Dutch book arguments. Um, and so the idea of a, a Dutch book argument is that, uh, so essentially a, a Dutch book is a series of bets that um, are, would by the lights of the person being offered the bets, be fair bets, given the way that they assign probabilities, um, but that guarantee that they will lose money. Um, so uh, the first thing to say here is, well, you know, we're assuming that uh, uh, that somebody's degrees of belief are going to be you know, modelled by their betting behaviour. So, I mean, that's just a, a standard assumption in, you know, sort of a standard idealisation in, in the literature. So um, the thought would be if I assign a, you know, 70 percent probability to uh, proposition you know, to A, right, then I would be willing to pay 70%, I would be willing to pay 70 pounds to uh, enter a bet that would give out a 100 pound prize if A is true, um, for example. Um, so the issue is if if I if I assign a 70% probability to A and a 70% probability to not A, then I'm going to be willing to pay 70 pound for a 100 pound payout if A is true, and I'll pay seventy pound for a hundred pound payout if not A is true. So overall, um, I will end up paying one hundred and forty pound to enter this bet, um, but I'm guaranteed only to get a hundred pound back. So, uh, so, so, you know, I, the, this this Dutch book it's a series of bets that guarantees a loss. And the point is that if you if your degrees of belief fail to conform to the axioms of the probability calculus, then you are guaranteed, it will be, it's guaranteed that it will be possible to make Dutch book bets against you. Um, so um, I find this kind of argument weird for a couple of reasons. So the first question is, is, all right, why shouldn't I just... <laughs> Why shouldn't I just assign those probabilities? Why shouldn't I assign 70% probability to both A and not A, and then just not take the Dutch book bet? So let's grant the assumption. Let's grant this, this idealization that um, degrees of belief uh, should be modeled in terms of betting behavior. Grant that, right? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not doubting that. So I'm going to grant that what it means for me to assign, uh, like, you know, uh, 70% probability to A is that I'm willing to pay £70 for a £100 prize if A is true. Right, so if you offer me that particular bet, I'll take it. Okay. Similarly, if you offer me a bet where I pay £70 for a £100 prize if not A is true, maybe I'll take that. You know, I'll, I'll take that too. But that doesn't commit me to taking both bets if both are offered. Right. So like I can be I can in general, this is just a general point, right? I can be willing to do X and I can be willing to do Y, but I might not be willing to do both X and Y. You know, I can be willing to like 
give 100 pounds to you know this charity and i can be willing to give 100 pounds to this charity but i might not be willing to give 100 pounds to both charities uh you know i, I might not be willing to part with 200 pounds um so uh so like yeah if if you offer me just a single one of those bets maybe i would take it um like yeah i, I would take it right but then if if i was offered both uh, then I just wouldn't, right? I just would. I, I then would not take them. Uh, would not take both. So uh, I, I mean, maybe uh, maybe I'd only take one. Maybe I would refuse uh, refuse both of them. Whatever. In either case, I'm not going to be guaranteed to lose money there. And if you offered me them at like different times, so you know, one hour you come and you offer me the seventy pound, you know, pay seventy pound for a hundred pound prize if. A is true. Well, maybe I'll just take that. But then later, if you offer me the uh, £70 for £100 prize, if not A is true, I'll be like, well, wait a minute, I'm about to be Dutch booked. I don't want to be Dutch booked. So uh, no, thanks. Um, so yeah, even if I'd be willing to take, I could be willing to take each bet separately, but then I can recognise that both of them together constitute a Dutch book. And so given that I don't want to be Dutch booked, I just won't do that because uh, I want to retain my money. So um, I, it, it kind of feels like, you know, this, the, this appeal to, to Dutch books sort of just doesn't work even on its own terms, even if we accept that degrees of belief have to be understood in terms of, uh, in terms of betting behaviour. Um, so, um, so that's one point. Now, the second point is, even if, um, it was the case that I had to take the Dutch book, so what? Um, I mean, how often are people actually uh, presented with uh, with with these with like Dutch book bets? Okay, um, so there's this there's this kind of thing going on here where uh, the Bayesian prima facie is giving a kind of pragmatic justification for their epistemology, right? Um, it's like you know you you should. Uh, make sure that your degrees of belief conform to the probability calculus, because you know, if you don't, there will be these negative practical consequences, and the negative practical consequences here um, will be that you could, you know, you're going to end up being Dutch booked, you, you, or at least you could be Dutch booked, right? Somebody could um, present a series of bets that you, that will be fair by your own lights, but where you're guaranteed to lose money. So, um, okay, well, you know, that does give me some justification, but it's it's a, it's it's a, it's a really weak justification, isn't it? I mean, again, because we know that Dutch books very rarely happen. I mean, in, in fact, in general, it's uh, it's not just that Dutch books very rarely happen. It's very rarely the case that um, you know people will <laughs> you know, offer me money for uh, uh, like you know particular payouts if certain propositions that I believe turn out to be true. You know that doesn't usually happen, but certainly you know it's it's rarely the case that I will find myself in a situation where somebody is offering a, a, a Dutch book bet. Um, and so I kind of think, you know, who cares? Like, why should I care if there are these hypothetical bookies who are offering bets that guarantee I lose money? Um, you know, it, it doesn't make, it just doesn't seem like a big deal to me. Um, I mean, so uh, it's, it's like, what, like, what, what's the threat here? It's like my counterparts, in nearby possible worlds uh, uh, are being uh, uh, fleeced by evil bookies. Um, well, I mean, if I lose sleep over that, uh, if I'm particularly worried about the fate of my counterparts in nearby possible worlds where there are loads of, uh, uh, you know, where there are loads of these Dutch bookies, um, then I guess I do have uh, a good reason to conform my beliefs to the probability calculus. Um, but, you know, I mean, that's that's not a very strong reason. And in any case, what, you know, my, my sort of incoherent probability assignments might well bring me pleasure in, in other ways, or they might have utility in other ways. So, okay, let's grant that it is indeed a cost that I can be Dutch booked, right? Um, but there might be benefits that outweigh that. 
So, uh, so here are some possible benefits, right? Let's say, for instance, that I uh, endorse a kind of phenomenal conservatism, phenomenal conservatism in epistemology, right? So I assign prior probabilities just on the basis of like my immediate intuitions, okay? And um, and obviously my immediate intuitions are not such that they are always going to obey the probability calculus. It's it's probably going to be the case that when I if I do that, if I assign um, probabilities just on the basis of my immediate intuitions, um, there's going to be some cases, maybe not um, where it's like just kind of obviously weird, where it's like, you know, I'm assigning 70% probability to uh, A and 70% probability to not A. But yeah, you know, there'll, there'll be cases where like I'll assign 70% probability to A and then I'll assign, you know, 60% probability to some proposition that ends up entailing not A. Uh, again, if I'm just like if I'm just assigning probabilities on the basis of my immediate intuitions, and like if I endorse phenomenal conservatism, if I find that to be a satisfying epistemology, that if that if that makes me feel warm and fuzzy, then you know why not, right? Um, or maybe I, uh, I I am a contrarian and I find it really enjoyable to um, frustrate, <laughs> to, to 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 cause frustration to you know, analytic philosophers and logicians and so on by holding uh, incoherent beliefs. Um, or maybe I've just finished reading Fire Arbens Against Method and, you know, I think it's time to try a, a radically new epistemology for theory formation. Um, so, uh, you know, I think, OK, right, like I can, I, I'm, I'm going to try something really kind of crazy and wild and see where we can go by just uh, assigning, um, yeah, assi assigning these these, these incoherent probabilities. Um, but uh, I mean, like whatever, whatever the case may be, there's lots of there's lots of reasons why um, I might judge that the benefits of, um, you know, of, 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 whole, of, of assigning probabilities in a way that violates the probability calculus is that's going to outweigh the cost of being Dutch booked. Um, and if I judge that the, the benefits of assigning probabilities in this way uh, does outweigh the cost of being Dutch booked, then w why would it be irrational to do that? Why is it irrational? I mean, again, this is I'm, I'm asking this on the, uh, the Bayesian's own terms, right? Like, um, you know, because the, the justification for like why it's irrational to do this appeals to Dutch books, so it's a kind of pragmatic justification, but it just doesn't seem to have much pragmatic force. Like, uh, like it seems like I could just not care that much about Dutch books, in which case, where's the, you know, wh why would it be irrational? Why, where's the irrationality of, of assigning probabilities in this way? Now, of course, you know, all of this is directed towards, uh, like I say, like subjective Bayesians and, and basically other people who think that, you know, the, the only constraint on um, the assignment of prior probabilities is uh, given by, you know, probability theory, right? So, um, you know, if, if you're like an objective Bayesian, if you think that, you know, you have to use some sort of principle of indifference, that there's like a, a fact of the matter about what the right probability assignment is. Um, so like, you know, when we have Verity assigning 70% to A and Sydney assigning 70% to not A, if you think that actually one of those must be incorrect, um, fair enough, this point uh, is, is not going to apply. But yeah, if you think that, like, like, actually, it doesn't make sense to speak of correctness in those cases, then I'm not sure why, why it's irrational, right, for when you sort of bring it to being, to being, you know, one person who's assigning those, those same probabilities, 70% uh, to A and 70% to not A. This is not obvious to me where the irrationality is there. Um, well, you know that. that well, that's that's uh, that's it for for this particular video. Uh, I um, I will see you next week, when hopefully I will be Doctor Kane Baker. Hopefully, um, but that's all for now.